We've been saying it for a while, but we don't have any room for error now. You know, it used to be we don't have much room for error. Now we don't have any room for error. It's almost that time again where every NBA fan is on the edge of their seats. It's almost playoff time, and the Lakers are three games back from the sixth seed in the Western Conference, which is pretty attainable. But this season for the Lakers has been a very weird one. They win games, they lose games, they go on win streaks, but then completely collapse. But they got LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And last year, the Lakers did pretty well, losing to the Denver Nuggets in the conference finals, which was pretty good after the pretty mediocre season that they had when they started with Russell Westbrook and actually got good with Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell. But in today's video, we're going to be going through the positives that the Lakers have to offer if they make the playoffs. And we'll be under Understanding all of this by breaking down some film and understanding if the Lakers are still a conference finals team that's just having a mediocre season. First, we got to start off with D'Angelo Russell, probably one of my favorite players on the Lakers. And last night, D'Angelo Russell talks about becoming the Lakers franchise leader in most three pointers made in a season. Take a listen. Uh, it just feels good to be a part of, like I said, one of these type of um, type of deals, you know, and this this franchise is one of the most prestigious. So to have my name, just to be a part of it, more than grateful, blessed beyond measures. Just want to keep, keep continuing to, to shatter it if I can, you know, make it really, really hard for the next person. So as we can see, D'Angelo Russell is ready to break records on the Lakers, but this record is a very important one. Most three-pointers made in a season really shows us LeBron loves playing with point guards that can shoot the ball. And this is where historically he has been good. But D'Angelo Russell didn't only break this three-point made record in a single season with the Lakers, he also broke it with the Nets. To help you better understand why D'Lo is so good at making these threes, let me show you how he gets wide open with just pick and rolls. On this play, D'Lo is getting a screen from Jackson Hayes, and the other defender is already ready to guard D'Lo. But the defender that's guarding D'Lo in the first place, Pat Connaughton, is fighting over the screen. So since he's fighting with the screen, he's pushing forward, and D'Lo does the complete opposite and goes back with a pullback move through his legs, and Pat Connaughton loses complete balance, so D'Lo gets a wide open three. But this next play really shows us how good D'Lo is with his pick and roll IQ. So he's getting a screen from Jackson Hayes, and instead of pulling up at the top of the key, he completely wraps around the screen, so he gets an even more wide open three point shot. D'Lo really gets slandered all the time in trade rumors, oh he's playing bad, usually he underperforms in some playoff games, but I really think this is the season where he proves everybody wrong. And when you think back to the Clippers and Lakers game where LeBron James had that crazy fourth quarter, D'Angelo Russell also made some three-pointers to get the Lakers back into that game. So when you imagine Anthony Davis, LeBron James on the same court with D'Lo, it's going to be even more deadly. The next player we have to talk about is Rui Hashimura. And I think this is a player that's very slept on every season and last season with the Lakers, I think he was one of the most important players that played a role in getting them to the conference finals. He hit a lot of three pointers. His catch and shoot threes were like at 50% at one rate. And most importantly, Rui Hashimura's ability to play defense is insane. But when the playoffs start, he turns into a 20 point machine. And last season I called him like, a younger version of Kawhi Leonard during the playoffs and everyone came at me but I still do believe when playoff time comes around he literally turns into like a younger Kawhi. But what makes Rui so good is his cutting IQ and being at the right place at the right time. It's not luck that he scores all these points, it's because he knows where to be on the court and let's break down some film. On this play Spencer Dinwiddie has the ball in the right wing and look at Rui Hashimura in the paint. He knows that Spencer is going to drive, and once he drives, Rui slowly goes into the paint and is right there for an easy pass and an easy finish under the rim. So on the next play, since Austin Reeves is attacking from the left side, Rui makes his way in the paint and he just waits there because he knows at a certain time, Reeves is going to drive into the paint and have him wide open for another layup. You could say it's the right place at the right time, but it's just cutting skills. Rui is also good at filling the lane out during a transition play over here, 
as Anthony Davis gets the steal, instead of sprinting to the left side, he sprints to the right, so he gives LeBron James that lane as well, and then he gets himself a wide open pass and a wide open dunk. This video was intended to show you guys the role players around Anthony Davis and LeBron James because whether you like it or not, this is what wins you championships. These role players that have high IQ and have perfect cutting abilities like Rui Hashimura does. And I'll talk about the third player that I think had a very good moment of growth this season and this is Austin Reeves. I love the way that he play makes and he gets a lot of other people open and there was a play last night against the 76ers where Reeves showed his playmaking ability and let me break down some film on it. Over here, Reeves gets a screen from Anthony Davis and goes over it, but continues to dribble to attract two players. And once he goes up for the shot, he bails out and he sees the wide open D'Angelo Russell for a three pointer. This is something he would not have done last season. He would have taken that shot. Reeves also had a very good scoring performance against the Celtics this season where he went off from the three point line. And that was just another preview of what he can do in the playoffs and he could still turn it up. But the reason why I still think that the Lakers can be a very serious threat in the West is because they're gonna get Jared Vanderbilt back to guard the team's best player offensively. And if some people don't think that getting Vanderbilt back is a big deal, it is very big. Vanderbilt was guarding Stephen Curry some plays and just having a player like Vando that is able to use all of his energy on the defensive side is so good for players like D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Davis, LeBron, so they get way more energy to play better on defense. And as per usual, LeBron James has been playing insane this season. I don't know how he does it at this age. He's averaging 25.7 rebounds and eight assists per game, holy. And Anthony Davis just had a big game against the 76ers, dropping 23 points, 19 rebounds, and four big blocks. But the funniest thing of the night was when D'Angelo Russell tried to be Dwayne Wade and get this funny picture off. My guy, you are not Dwayne Wade with all due respect. But this was funny, you know, D'Lo was trying to get a nice picture with LeBron. But in the comment section, let me know, what do you guys think? You think the Lakers can make it out the play in and even get to that six seed or you think that they won't even make the playoffs this season whatsoever i want to know your guys' opinions if you are new to the channel make sure you guys smash that like button if we can get to like 1000 likes that would be crazy and hit that subscribe i will catch you guys in the next video peace it's room for error now we don't have any room for error get just 12 games left obviously you have to win a lot of them to try to move up where do you think the team's focus is at and what do you have to think about the most um a ton a ton of turnovers i'm not sure how many we had but 20 plus yeah that's that's terrible for us 